Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. It is the first week of After School Program's flagship. Um, MCAT is working in partnership with the flagship program, and we'll have flagship Friday starting next week, not this week. So stay tuned with all that stuff. But today, we're also doing something a little bit different and special for you guys as well. We're going to learn a little bit about some of the equipment that you can check out here at MCAT. It's the Canon Rebel T3i, and we'll talk about that later in the show. So let's kick things off with some uh, news that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Uh, while most Missoulians were worried about the arts at the University of Montana, the Global Humanities and Religions Material Science programs were cut. A few programs saw increases with women's gender and sexual studies growing by 58%, African American studies by 138%, computer science by 3%, physical therapy by 9%, public and community health by 37%, social work by 7%, and speech, language, and hearing sciences by 20%. Uh, College of Visual and Performing Arts, which drew a fierce show of support last week uh, with the uh, miscommunication by, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I think it was Kemper, uh, emerged with about 13% cuts. Um, the art and theater to dance department were cut by 14%, and the music department were cut by 13%. About $38 million uh, was actually budgeted for the instruction last fiscal year, but the university determined that it, only about $29 million was needed to hit the 2019 to 2013 student-faculty ratio, which helped uh, because the, uh, the University of Montana is looking to decrease $10 million. So with this uh, increase, about nine, they're actually just going to um, decrease uh, cut out $5 million completely um, while they use the $4 million to help expand a strategic investment for teaching. So basically trying to get more students to come on down um, and try to ha offer more programs in terms of that. So they're still uh, looking to cut some programs as well, I believe. So we'll, we'll just have to keep our uh, eyes and ears on it. Um, in state news, Montana Rail Link officials say that the main freight line across southern Montana has reopened after the coal train derailed at Columbus. As many as 40 cars carrying about 4,720 tons of coal went off the tracks. Uh, the train was traveling just under 40 miles per hour. More than 60 Montana Relink link workers use, using heavy equipment were able to clear the wreckage and the main reopened 3.40 a.m. Thursday morning. Train traffic has resumed. Of course, the national news, uh, that's the big thing that's happening right now, is Brett, Judge Brett Kavanaugh has been accused of sexual misconduct by five different women, which uh, started out as a done deal for Kavanaugh to be accepted as justices of the peace on the Supreme Court. Um, needless to say, many people on the committee hearing have been split on um, with Democrats cl uh, clearly confused that their Republican ca counterparts are still considering his nomination. President Trump, who has been accused of multiple women, uh, from multiple women of sexual misconduct has strongly backed Kavanaugh, even as uh, more allegations have emerged against uh, the high court nominee. At the same time, he called the allegations ridiculous and repeated his counter accusation that Democrats are playing a con game. Uh, key Republicans say that they th uh, thought the hearing scheduled for Thursday, which was yesterday, uh, should go forward. It remained um, the uh, Judiciary Committee's schedule as uh, the meeting scheduled for Friday, at which the committee could vote on whether to recommend Kavanaugh for the full set to the full Senate, which will be voted on. So it's, it's just a forward moving um, um, machine that's going on as well. Uh, of course, the hearing started Thursday morning with uh, Christine uh, Blaisley Ford before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And she said she had no political agenda in coming forward about the her allegations against Supreme Court uh, nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh. And she s mentions, I am an independent person and I am no one's pawn. And this is just a little uh, quote uh, from her uh, featuring Miss um, Feinstein. You are very clear about the attack, being pushed into the room. You say you don't know quite by whom, uh, but that it was Brett Kavanaugh that covered your mouth to prevent you from screaming, um, and then you escaped. How are you so sure that it was he? Uh, the same way that I'm sure that I'm talking to you right now is uh, just basic memory functions um, and uh, also just the level of norepinephrine and epinephrine in the brain that sort of, as you know, encodes that neurotransmitter, encodes memories into the hippocampus and so the trauma-related experience then is kind of locked there whereas other details kind of drift. So what you are telling us is this could not be a case of mistaken identity. Absolutely not. All right, so that was uh, um, Christine Ford on talk on her uh, 
opening statement during this. And of course, uh, de- of course, uh, Brett Kavanaugh that afternoon spoke to the committee in, in response to allegations and said that asking for consent to uh, uh, is uh, different from what the committee has been doing in terms of search and destroy uh, to, uh, for how the media and senators have been painted him in a negative light. Brett Kavanaugh, um, I have his quote from there as well. Um, he did a 44 a uh, 45 minute um, opening statement in regards to this but here is a little uh, a bit of what he was mentioning uh, when he was um, during the summer of 82 when the alleged uh, sexual misconduct took place um, he has meticulous record he says he has meticulous records of uh, the events that was uh, going on in the summer which made it impossible for him to uh, match up with her happened in the summer of 1982 on a weekend night my calendar shows all but definitively that I was not there. During the weekdays in the summer of 1982, as you can see, I was out of town for two weeks of the summer for a trip to the beach with friends and at the legendary five-star basketball camp in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. When I was in town, I spent much of my time working, working out, lifting weights, playing basketball, or hanging out and having some beers with friends as we talked about life and football and school and girls. Some have noticed that I didn't have church on Sundays on my calendars. I also didn't list brushing my teeth, and for me, Going to church on Sundays was like brushing my teeth. All right, so that's uh, kind of what Brett Kavanaugh said in his uh, part of his opening statement. You guys can check it out online anywhere. It's pretty much you can find it anywhere, and that's why I did. Okay, so after the uh, listening to Christine uh, Blasey Ford and Kavanaugh testify on Thursday, Arizona Senator uh, Jeff Flake issued a statement. Um, he voted in favor, which it was a key vote in moving forward in his uh, judiciary, uh, moving forward to the Senate to be considered. Um, and he quoted in saying, uh, he, he left the hearing yesterday with much doubt as certainty, as yes vote allowed his nomination to move forward regardless of any more investigations that are going on. Uh, Senator Bob Corker in the statement said that while both individuals provided compelling testimony, nothing has been presented uh, corroborates the allegation. There is no question that Judge Kavanaugh is qualified to serve on the Supreme Court, and in different political environment, he would be confirmed overwhelmingly. So that's kind of what's happening in the news today. I'm just going to kind of leave it at that, and I got some new programs is going to be Aaron and Cat when I come back. I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend, so stay with me. September 24, 1841, when Father Pierre de Smit 
together with his fellow Jesuit missionaries, Father Gregory Mangarini, Father Nicholas Point, Brother William Clausens, Brother Joseph Specht, and Brother Charles Hewitt arrived in the Bitterroot Valley. Their supplies were transported in three carts and a wagon, the first wheeled vehicles to enter the area. The first church and settlement were built on the east bank of the Bitterroot River near present-day Stevensville. Another small story began in October of 1845. Father Anthony Ravalli arrived at St. Mary's Mission carrying with him two burr stones from which he, Brother Clausens, Brother Specht, and millwright Peter Bildot constructed the first water-powered flour mill and sawmill. So you had to learn things fast and you spoke the truth. You never lied. The chief had the responsibility amongst all of his people to watch over them. His people, all of them, he'd say, this is my children. He'd make decisions for when, when it was time. He'd tell the people, all right, it's time to keep your children quiet. Someone has passed away. I know in my raising, I, I could go outside to play, and my great-grandmother would tell me, you be quiet. There's someone that passed away some miles away in respect for that family. And so we did that. You always learn to take care. When you made your kill, like I say, we made offerings for it, to send it on its journey for this animal that has given its life for us to feed our family. And we had to be in a good mood when we killed. We did just uh, didn't go gutting through. We took our time as to massage the animal that has been taken. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. There's a lot of movies coming out. The last couple, the next couple of weekends, we're gonna have quite a list of pre-critics. So if you guys don't know what pre-critic is, is where I prejudge a movie whether it needs it or not. Let's talk about some uh, movies that are coming out. Uh, kicking things off is a comedy with uh, Kevin Hart, mm, uh, Tiffany Haddish, mm, and from some of the people and more that brought you a uh, girl's trip comes a mashup of Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish, who are two comedians who bring themselves into a movie where they try to one-up each other in insults and hilarity ensues, of course, uh, as a man who uh, has to get his GED because he dropped out of high school so he has to go to night school, hence why the movie's called Night School. And you got a bunch of other actors in it who are comedians who are, it's kind of like a, a troop of comedians that come together to make this movie possible. And you just kind of watch this movie and you're just kind of like, oh, okay, so he kind of learns his lesson in the end or something or something happens. But the whole concept of the movie is that she gives him tough love and he's just like, I'm uh, I'm not used to hearing real talk and stuff like that. And then like, I don't know, that's, uh, it's like, it's like you, you what you think this movie is going to be is exactly what this movie is going to be. So if you saw the trailer, you pretty much know the whole entire movie. <laughs> and speaking of movies, um, remember those kind of movies that are kind of like, hey, but what if we flip those tropes? So speaking of tropes, have you ever wondered about the elusive Bigfoot views of the rest of the world like us? Uh, well, get reverse racist with kids, a um, movie about a Yeti who needs to prove that humans, a.k.a. Smallfoot, which is what this movie is called, are real. Of course, how bad are they going to uh, keep nailing this joke on the head? It's like, oh, they're real. I know they're real. And, you know, there's, there's like 8 billion people on the planet. Like, how can, they dis how can they not prove that they're real? I guess they're just kind of like in their, I don't know. It, it's just, th that's what the kind of like the trope of this movie is. It's kind of like, oh, uh, there's no such thing as humans. It's kind of like, uh, I guess, like what they did with Monsters Incorporated, where monsters are afraid of humans. So anyways, that's kind of what you can expect from this, but maybe not as good. Um, Hellfest. 
Uh, speaking of Halloween, uh, I wasn't speaking of Halloween. Imagine those uh, theme parks that have those scary themes to them for Halloween, but since it's time to have fun scares, the two dark scales scares come beneath the surface. Watch as some 20-year-old teenagers tackle a guy um, who is stalking and killing these youngsters on a night where people cannot take them too seriously. So instead of like cops showing up at the last minute and being like, we saved the day, it's more just like cops laughing at your face and being like, oh, it's just part of the show. And that's kind of how it's going to be. Um, another movie. Hey, guys, have you ever uh, read The Old Man in the Sea? Me neither. Uh, this movie is called The Old Man and the Gun, and it stars a retiring actor, Robert Redford. So I think this is the third or fourth time he's tried to retire in a time where people don't care about movie stars because uh, more people are watching good movies. Also, this movie is based on a true story, so it has that trope, too. So, you know, it's going to be one of those uh, movies uh, about an old man who uh, wanders around and robs banks. He gets out of jail, and the first thing he does is go back to a life of crime. So I think uh, this movie is uh, is basically what you get, what you watch. Um, and, yeah, that's uh, there's not really much to say about this. It's kind of... Uh, just kind of a mixed bag of just all sorts of tropes and other things. I, I, there's nothing really original coming out, if you really think about it. You got the, the Halloween trope. It's just like, oh, no, the, it's a killer is actually real the whole time. It's like, oh, no, it's another uh, bank robber. But it, it's um, it's this movie is the kind of movie my dad would like to watch because it's like, hmm, old retired people uh, robbing the young. Because that's happened a lot of times. Anyways, um, that's kind of what the movies are coming out this weekend as well. But uh, today is your last chance to check out uh, the Clay Studio because the Clay Studio is going to be wrapping up this art installation. And this is from our very own producer here, Rick Phillips. So without further ado, here's this. And when I come back, I'm going to talk to you guys about some events. <laughs> Hey guys, before I forget, I want to remind you guys that it is uh, Friday. Uh, yes, it is Friday. Trust me. Um, also happening tonight, um, MCAT, uh, MCAT's going to be live streaming a sports game. It's uh, going to be a good one. It's going to be Big Sky versus, I believe it's going to be uh, Billings uh, or CMR. Um, I'll have to double check that later. But anyways, uh, last night there was a very tough game between um, Glacier and Hellgate Volleyball. You guys can check it out on our Facebook page. Um, also, if you want to learn more about MCAT, you can go to our website at MCAT.org. It's loading right now. Nice little website where you guys can check out all the original programming that's going to be happening on MCAT. All the programs that I kind of teased and kind of showed you. Even some of the art clips that I showed you guys you can have access to by going to MCAT.org. I just wanted to kind of mention a nice little shout out. Be sure to like us on Facebook for any notifications when we go live. And if you want to watch anything live on our channel, we do a local live uh, stream right here if any, there's any upcoming events. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. So yeah, local live is how you can watch live uh, streaming events that are uh, um, on the calendar. But of course, you can always go to channel 189 and you can find out all the shows that are on 
the air you can also watch live right now if you click on this watch low icon it'll bring you to this page and if I click it right here there's gonna be a lot of uh, there'll be a huge delay of uh, <laughs> See, you can even see some of the thing because it's already showing you what I just showed you. Yes, I, I don't want to get like too uh, meta about this show, so I'm just going to kind of get into it. So if you want to learn more about uh, Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. It's a nice for major writer out twice. All the information you need to know about this and that. But I also wanted to give a brief note to the city uh, council. If you're interested in learning about the city council and learning more about um, what's going on with the city of Missoula, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a website where you can have, a, have access to everything that's happening in the city involving permits. If you want to fill in any um, potholes, so if there's any potholes you have, you can basically search here and just maybe a pothole. Here it is. So pothole, road patch repair, Pothole bid re reports, all sorts of things and claims and stuff, all sorts of things. Um, a pothole fill. Anyways, um, I, I was going to kind of show you how to uh, uh, basically uh, fill in the potholes um, if you guys are interested in learning about that as well. But um, you guys can look that up on the website anytime and can look that up yourself. Uh, let's uh, talk about some um, city council stuff because the city council didn't have any committee meetings on Wednesday. They went out of town. They went to the uh, League of T um, Cities and Towns, which was held in Butte. It's a conference where a bunch of cities and towns come together and they just kind of talk about... Um, Let's see, I have little notes on here and they have their kind of like statement of what they do. Hold on, let me just try to find it. Uh, do, do, do. Just hold on a second. Okay, I'm getting to it. Um, it's not loading. <laughs> of course it's not loading. Why would it load? Uh, it, 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 why would it load if I wanted it to load? Okay, here we go. Um, all right, so the leagues of city and towns, the Montana League of Cities and Towns, an incorporated nonpartisan nonprofit association of 127 Montana municipalities. There's 121 towns and cities organized under the con a constitution originally adopted in 1931. The league has uh, the sole purpose to uh, cooperate improvement of municipal government in Montana. It acts as a clearinghouse through which the municipalities cooperate through their mutual benefit. That's kind of like. That's their uh, mission in a nutshell, and that's what the city of Missoula and a m bunch of people from them are going to up to Butte, which is only like an hour and a half away. Um, it's not too far, so they're going to be doing that for the next couple of days, and I think today is the last day where they have these uh, meetings in Butte. So that's kind of what's happening there. I'm going to kind of quickly allude to some of our events that are happening. So let's talk about some events that are happening inside the city of Missoula. There's always a bunch of stuff going on and kicking off is the Missoula Senior Symposium. It's the first ever and they hope to kind of continue moving this as well. It's to uh, perform uh, presentations on topics from assisted living to VA assistance. Various business in the Missoula area will be available to answer any questions you may have on the products or services. It's going to be at Hilton Garden Inn. Doors open at 8.30 so it's already open. Um, and the presenters begin now. And the keynote speaker is Steve Darty from Ms. Montana Elder Law, who will be discussing estate planning to uh, asset protection for seniors. It's good. It's a good way to learn all about that and more. Um, if you want your kids uh, to learn some reading and uh, all sorts of fun stuff, go to Missoula Pub Public Library starting at 1030 this morning. Missoula Public Library, uh, most mornings, uh, most days, uh, starting at 1030, they have Tiny Tales or Story Time, which is a, a, in, it's a it's an engaging learning environment for kids to pick up a book and learn to read and get involved with your local library. Mismo Roots and Ms., uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena are all your indoor sports arena type stuff. So as the weather starts getting a little bit colder and outdoor activities start becoming more and more limited, it's good to consider some of those places that I just mentioned, Mismo Roots Acro Sports Center and Mizzou Under Sports Arena for some of your kids' active fun during the winter. DNA Extraction, Spectrum Discovery Center is doing some DNA extraction starting at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. is their open hours there. Where they're going to kick things off. Um, this week in the makerspace is spinning tops, so you get to make your own spinning top in their 3D printer and take it home with you. Yarns and Watercolor at the Mizzou Public Library you like to uh, stitch or you like to uh, watercolor. They have those options for you every Friday starting at noon at the Missoula Public Library. Cribbage and Bridge. 
Missoula Senior Center, best stands for in Missoula. Starting at 1230, you guys can check out Cribbage and or Bridge. It's a nice way to get to the Missoula Senior Center, and they have a lunch there. They're doing a lot of bingo nights as well uh, this month as well. Endeavor um, is a basically a homeschool co-op with uh, it's basically PTA minus the T. Um, a bunch of parents come together and uh, pool their resources to make their own school and uh, engaging in a collab collaborative learning environment for their kids. Um, it's uh, they're doing a. Um, board games, card games, and just kind of a meet and greet with people. Uh, they ask that uh, your your kids, uh, it's for kids, but you're asked that your adults come with their kids as well. It starts at 1.30 p.m., but uh, they have Lego, uh, fun free Lego stuff starting at 2.30 p.m. this afternoon. Grizz, uh, the Grizz uh, soccer team are playing against Eastern Washington today, so you can check out uh, South Street. So if you go to uh, South Street, you can go all the way to the soccer team, and they take on Eastern Washington. It's the South Campus Stadium. Family fun time at the YMCA from 3 30 to 5 p.m. after school on Friday. Every 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 uh, Friday after school, uh, you get to go to the YMCA. It's $22 for a whole family to have some indoor fun at the YMCA. Uh, teen Riders Group at the Missoula Public Library. Hey, you want to drop off your teen? If they don't want to hang out at the YMCA, you can drop them off at the Missoula Public Library and they can improve their writing skills. Uh, Predator Feeding at the Missoula Insectarium, 4 p.m. if you're interested in uh, just uh, learning about bugs. And they're doing a predator feeding. So every Friday at 4 p.m., they join um, and explain that and demonstrate how um, um, these creatures consume play, uh, consume prey. It's an insectarium. Not necessarily all of them are insects. Um, some of them are anthropods and uh, all sorts of uh, different cool little uh, insect type animal just, um, creatures. Um, and they just kind of see who's hungry today. Okay, so violin classes for ages two and up. It's never too early to start violin lessons and MCT Center for Performing Arts is doing violin classes. And this is uh, for kids age two to five, 68. And then of course, young fiddlers, it starts at uh, at years eight years old, Missoula Children's Theater. And it's uh, Fridays, every single Friday from September 14th to, uh, to October 19th. Of course, you can go to mctinc.org for more details about that. And you can go to growmissoulamusic.com. Uh, Family Friendly Friday is at the top hat. They have drink specials um, for uh, parents, um, and you get uh, your kids get to hang out, run around. Sometimes they have some fun um, kid activities and bands there. So from 6 to 9 p.m. at the top hat, you can check that out. UM Planetarium Public Show. The UM uh, Planetarium, they usually do this about a couple times a year, so you want to check this out. Um, you can get uh, tickets at grizzticks.com. It is, uh, shows our Friday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, or 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. There's two different shows. Tickets are at $6 for adults and $4 for uh, children 12 and under. During each of a public program, they'll take you on a tour of the current night skies of Missoula, pointing out noteworthy objects, constellation planets, or upcoming event visible in the night sky. Um, and that pretty much does it for your Friday events. I want to uh, allude to another art clip for you guys. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some Saturday events. All right, so I just had to skip ahead on that one. Thanks to Rick Phillips for providing that art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. If you are interested in um, learning more about that, you can check out the Gallery of the Visual Arts and the Social Science Building. But let's talk about some Saturday events. You know, there's a lot of, of stuff happening on Saturday. Um, kicking things off is the uh, School Color Run. It's at the Missoula Fairgrounds. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is a color run walk. Um, 
features 50 yards of toddler dash, one mile fun run, and a 5K course. Throughout the course, a participants will experience color splash zones. So if you go into these areas, you get your splash of color and a little do uh, uh, dosed in it. Um, there will also be a final color toss celebration. And you can check in starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Race starts at 9. Uh, they have a bunch of different things. Toddler Dash is 9.15. One Mile Fun Run is 9.30. And of course, the 5K starts at 10 a.m. Uh, this is a post-race family fun celebration. There'll be music, food, and special guests celebrating families in high quality each childhood education. Early registration register early and you can always go more information by going on to their Facebook slash events for more information farmers markets hey guys farmers market still going on strong it's gonna go on well and through October um, they're pretty much gonna start winding down so there's not gonna be too much going on there but they're gonna have a bunch of apple cider apple cider there's gonna be a bunch of apple picking type stuff fall festivals harvest festivals this weekend through um, the historic museum at Fort Missoula I think there's gonna be another fall festival there's a whole bunch of things happening um, but Farmer's Market, still going strong, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday. St. Paul Rummage Sale, St. Paul Lutheran Church of Missoula. You can come in to their uh, lower level fellowship hall from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday, and then 8 a.m. to 12 on Saturday. This is uh, just a rummage sale. Um, anniversary celebration at Westside Lanes. It's been 35 years since Westside Lanes um, started here in the city of Missoula, and they're celebrating 35 years, and they're going to be doing... Um, 83 uh, cent shoe rentals, 83 cent burgers, 83 cent hot dogs. Basically, 83 is the year that they th started. So dress in your best 80s clothing. Karaoke will be playing all 80s music all night long. Milltown State Park floodplain trail repair. Hey, Milltown State Park uh, is a fairly brand new park out of Bonner, and they always look for... Uh, um, volunteers to go on down and help fix the uh, the trails and because it used to be a floodplain because of the um, the Bonner Dam and it would fill up with water. It's basically a lake, but once I got rid of the dam, it got lowered down and be like, we have all this open space, let's make it pretty. So Milltown State Park was created as a result. And you guys can make it even even more beautiful if you guys help out. They do this usually every Saturday. And you can check in with them at Milltown State Park. They have their own website. You can check it out. All you gotta do is look for the keyword Milltown State Park. UM Dancers on location, University of Montana. It's a free concert presents dancers as installations. Um, in unusual venues across campus. Dances are created for specific sites such as fire escapes, Roofs of trees, elevators, stairwells, bridges, rivers, roofs of buildings, and sculptures. So while you guys are going to the campus, be aware that there will be dancers um, just in random places. Um, MCAT Saturday drop-ins. Hey, I just want to uh, let you guys know that MCAT does Saturday drop-ins every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. It's for kids age 9 to 13. It's $10 for the whole day. It's four hours of fun and stop animation, games, all sorts of cool things, and just kind of get experience of MCAT of what MCAT's all about. Um, half days are five dollars. So if you want, if your kids like, okay, I'm kind of not having this, then they can ho uh, hop in for half a day. Uh, Montana Book Festival, um, Hearth, starting at 2018. Um, Wilma, the the Montana Book Festival will present readings from the anthology. Hearth at the Wilma Theater at 7 p.m. on Saturday, September 29th, followed by panel discussion moderated by the editors, Nick Smith and Susan O'Connor, authors and contributors uh, Gretel Erth Ehrlich, um, Deborah Erling, and Christopher Merrill will be reading and t um, taking part on the panel. Um, Musical Myths, 64th season premiere at the University of Montana. They're going to have uh, um, all sorts of music uh a trumpet concer concerto. They're going to have some Russian music. It's going to be just a wonderful time. It's going to be at the University of Montana's um, Denison Theater starting at 7.30 p.m. It's the 64th season premiere of Musical Myths. Um, also, I just want to mention um, Sunday is the kickoff for Homecoming Week. I just want to let you guys know that um, Homecoming is all next Saturday, uh, and MCAT's going to be uh, live streaming from our Facebook page and broadcasting. We're going to be trying to be live broadcasting on um, MCAT as well, so you guys can check out um, those uh, s um, those wonderful, wonderful uh, homecoming parade stuff from your downtown area. This is for some, I mean, like, it's always good to come on down here yourself as well, but if you are um, unable to go to the homecoming parade, you can always watch on MCAT Channel 189, or you can watch it online on our Facebook page or uh, MCAT.org. So just letting you guys know about that. But also MCT, not associated with MCAT, is doing an audition for Elf the Musical. Elf the Musical, it's based on the movie Elf, starring Will Ferrell, and it's, uh, 
It's going to be a delightful musical celebrating the holiday season and the holiday spirit about Buddy, the elf, who is a human who is raised by elves, going to the big city to find his father. And hilarity ensues. All right, so that's kind of what's happening with all your um, events and stuff. I do want to throw it to one more art clip for you guys. It is the Monster Project hosted out of the Zutan Arts Community Center. And when I come back, I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about the Rebel T3i with a little tech demo right after this. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some um, tech stuff. So, um, ugh, ooh, e. Let's plug this baby back in. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm plugging in this uh, sweet, sweet T3i camera to the computer, so you guys will be able to see what I'm going to show you guys. So this is the Canon Rebel T3i. You can see that there's the little on switch. A lot of times it's pretty, pretty straightforward, and as you can see. This is the kind of image that you're going to get. You can see all those uh, cool little uh, features that are happening on there. You have um, video focus, and you can see the histogram at the top right-hand corner. And, oh, nope, not yet. It's my face. Hi, how's it going? So up above, you see the histogram, and it changes between lighting. So if I go here, you can see how it's like really far to the left. That means it's a little bright over here. So let's move, maybe move a little bit further over here. Yeah, it changes with the lighting. So. Let's go to ISO. So I'm clicking on the very top hand button right here that says ISO. And I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with auto. Because auto is always nice because if you're in a very low lit area, you have the chance to kind of uh, um, put to auto and it gives you a little bit of a, a boost in terms of layer, uh, in terms of lightness. So auto, if you're in a really dark area, sometimes uh, 6400 won't cut it, so go to auto and it'll help brighten it up just a little bit, just a kind of a quick little access point as well. So right now I'm going to hit the menu button, which is on the computer, uh, I mean on the camera, what am I talking about? So if you hit the menu button, it'll bring you to a, a nice uh, menu momentarily. Just wait for it, wait for it, just wait for it, there it is. Okay, so you see the menu right here? Let's start off with uh, basic movie exposure. Um, I, I don't mind manual. It's okay. It gives I me mean, like if you uh, go to manual, you get control of your ISO, you get control of your shutter, you can could basically control uh, the lighting in your uh, video. If you hit auto, you basically just kind of get what you get. It's it gives you what you get, and some people prefer this because it's easier just to go with auto. A lot of auto functions are just perfectly fine, and yeah, we're just gonna kind of go through the list, um, just the checklist. You know, auto focus mode. It's just quick mode. A lot of times, I prefer to go with manual focus, which is on the camera right on the very end of the lens right here. Um, I'm just gonna scroll on down. Auto focus with shutter button during filming. Eh, you don't need to worry about some of those things. You know, you can disable it. Uh, shutter speed lock. You know, there's, you know, it's it's completely. Some of these things are not necessarily too, um, you know, to stress out too much about. But of course, you know, remote control. Imagine you have a remote, you want to film yourself, but you don't want to like go over, hit the record button, and then walk on over, and then start talking. 
All right, let's move on to the next section. So all you got to do is just move right, and you can kind of see this whole area. So movie recording size is another big uh, thing as well. I'm going to switch on back over to the uh, main mode. So if we click on this button lightly, or you can hit the menu button. There's uh, usually about three or two ways to do many different things, and you can kind of see it's back to here. So of course, I'm going to kind of cover it up, and there's a button at the very back, and it's uh, it's the cue. It's always the cue. There's a little cue at the bottom um, corner of the camera, so if I want to just quickly show you, um, it's usually around here, and you'll see like a giant cue. If you click on it, it'll bring you to this. So as you can see, it kind of gives you the option right here, and you can um, switch between um, different frame rates. So you can see this is 30 frames per second. This is 24 frames per second. This is if you want to boost it up to 60 frames per second. But you do, you will lose quality as a result of that. Um, you can kind of see where it's like right here, just along this line. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you don't quick, uh, if you don't click, uh, if you don't uh, choose quick enough, it'll basically kind of default to choosing it. So you kind of like scroll through. And this is, the, you know, this is the pretty much the standard, you know. This is how we always leave, leave the cameras at 19, uh, 20 by 30 frames. So yeah, you can you can kind of see how it's kind of like moving back and forth. And now I'm going to go back to Q, and I'm going to show you 24. It's kind of pixelated. You can it, it, it's less smooth on that in terms of that. So let's go back to uh, menu. And I'm going to kind of quickly go through more of this stuff as well. So uh, sound recording. I always like to go to auto because if you're on auto, you can um, control the audio. And I'm just going to move my head just a little bit. I think I might just actually move it to the. Uh, let's reset that. Oops. Hold on one second. I'm going to move myself up here. Cool. Okay. So as you can see down here, you know the audio is peaking and stuff like that. You can do a manual, and you can uh, do you know different chord levels. You can enable wind filter. You know, of course, you know, sometimes if you film outside, it's nice to have a wind filter. Uh, the little audio that takes it is on the very top uh, corner of it. Um, yeah, so like right here, this is your audio. It's like literally this tiny little audio thing right here. So a lot of times if you're holding your, uh, your camera like this, like usually you hold your camera like this and your hand usually covers up the audio. So you, you run the risk of actually not recording any of your audio when you're actually doing this. Um, so you got to be very careful about uh, where you put your hand. And sometimes, you know, like even on the side, you know, where I have this uh, cable hooked up and everything, there's also a little uh, attachment right here where you can hook up a microphone. But we're not going to talk too much about the uh, the uh, hardware. We're going to talk more about the internal software type stuff. So let's um, head back on over to the menu stuff. So meter timing. That's another huge important thing that I kind of want to mention as well is metering timing. And that basically controls um, how much time you get to record. Plain and simple. Meteor timing, it's a lot of times I've always noticed that uh, for some reason there's always somebody who always changes it low to like 30 seconds or 16 seconds. So imagine you're filming yourself for maybe half an hour and you find out that it's on meteor timing. So 30 seconds, it will record for 30 seconds automatically and then it will stop recording at a time. So you got to be aware of that. So 30 minutes is usually the maximum because a lot of times while you're recording, it does use a lot of energy to record to the card. And also just another side note is that Canon C3i don't have an internal memory. So a lot of times you have to have an SD card to record to the camera. All right. But like I said, 30 minutes, you want the complete maximum in terms of meteor and timing. Grid display. Do you need it? It's a good way just to kind of talk about um, just the little things here and there. Um, you know, you have two different grids. You have the basic grid, which is grid one. Grid two is very fine tuny type grid. But I'm going to go to grid one for an example, and I'm going to go go back to uh, visual mode. And you're going to see kind of like the whole kind of concept of it. And you can see like each square has representation. And if you see uh, the middle square, that's kind of like where you want those people to be. Like, or if you like filming, like imagine yourself filming a horror movie, you want to have maybe this person kind of right here and then leave this uh, particular area, negative space. So if your person's talking right here and then another person starts coming in and gets them. That's, that's pretty much the kind of like the standard horror movie is that you, you have to work with just as much of uh, the space that you have with also the space that you don't have. 
All right, so that was a brief de demonstration about grid space, and it kind of gives you kind of like an idea of the, the, the rule of thirds. So like you have your top third where you don't want to like, you know, like cut your head off. You want to be able to see a little bit of space of your head. Your face should be kind of in the, uh, the middle quadrant. And then, of course, right here, you want to have enough space if you want to add like a title, like a lower third. That's just a rule of thirds. All right, video uh, snapshot. That's, um, you know, two-second movies, three-second movies, and stuff like that. You know, that's, it's nice to do, but that's uh, pretty much along the same lines of meter time, uh, metering timing where it records for a short amount of time, and then it basically stops recording. So it's not good for long-formatted filming and that kind of thing, but it really depends upon your personal preferences. Exposure. This is another thing that you can get on back in your uh, old picture style. So we're going to exit the menu, and we're going to go to here, and we're going to kind of show you how the lighting works. So w this little nice little scroll button on the very top hand, top of the screen allows you to kind of change it. And you can see, look at the number below here. It says 60. Now it's 80, 100, 125. And as you can see, if I go over here, I can brighten it up a little bit. So this is 30. So if I go to, for some reason, when we go to 60, 60 is another thing. If you go, like film a monitor or film a, a slideshow, you can start seeing like a rolling shutter. You can start seeing like the camera rolling. Um, yeah, I mean like not the camera rolling, but the, uh, the, the uh, there, there's always like, it's like when you uh, film old computers from back in the day. If you're, if you're filming at a certain frame rate, you actually see the bars moving and stuff like that. So it can be kind of annoying and distracting. It kind of takes away from the movie. So that's basically like how you control it through the double face through this guy right here. It's as simple as just doing this. And it's uh, basically, you know, you can hit the buttons. You know, you have display, you know, zoom in display. You can hit more of the buttons, auto, you know the buttons on top. And of course, you know, this is the uh, video function option. So I'm going to go back to menu. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of give you the guys the rundown, the, r the red, and then of course, you know, auto light optimizer, you know, you have, I disable it on this camera, but you know, standard is pretty good. You know, a lot of times it's not the biggest thing, custom white balance. So that's another big thing. Um, so here's some of the uh, f videos as well, but of course, um, you you probably have to do this in um, live mode. So if you go to live mode, you have to do uh, custom white balance in that regard. So picture style, auto, you can do neutral. Neutral is usually pretty good, uh, but auto it works fine because a lot of times auto features are you know good to have in there. Um, you know, standard portrait, landscape, new, um, neutral, faithful, monochrome all sorts of different options as well. So, you know, if you're trying to get like a nice pictures of the landscape, that's uh, it's pretty much uh, kind of tells you what you need to do. Um, and let's go to the next, the last of the red stuff. So you have quality and this is everything to do with the pictures. So if you go here, it kind of tells you how much uh, the percentage up there, it's 1920 by uh, 1280. Um, if you go to your right, it gets a little bit lower. You have law and L, so this is large. So it gives. So when you take a picture, it actually gives you two pictures, the raw uh, and the, of course the large um, 5184 by 3456. But these are all picture related. And I'm just gonna keep it at uh, standard too. Um, you got beep, you know, beep to uh, A. It's basically it, 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 the camera beeps at you, and you know, disabled. You don't want anything more distracting and annoying at you. So a lot of times I just disable it. Uh, release shutter speed with uh, without card. Um, that's a whole other thing right here. You can. Um, yep. <laughs> so image review. This is another important thing as well. So let's say you take a picture and you want to see. Uh, what the picture looks like, it's good just to have on. And then, of course, four seconds is pretty standard. So when you take a picture, you can look at your camera and be like, okay, I like that picture, and kind of move on from there. Um, uh, you know, illumination correct, you know, enable, disable, you know, attached lens, you know, yeah. And of course, uh, these blue these blue sections are basically in um, camera editors. So if you have a picture like you did, like on the side or anything like that, you can go through here and you can rotate, protect images. You can also raise some images, resize images, and just kind of do a, like, a little house in editing as well. Um, more stuff. Oh, histogram. Histogram, like, like I showed you at the very beginning of this quick little talk, is that the histogram is up above. 
and it's at the very right, and it basically lets you choose between uh, red, green, blue, and the different levels of that, but this is the basic histogram that you can see above you, is like you see different lighting, you know, see how it kind of changes depending upon how much light reflects, see, I have more light right here. Yeah, pretty straightforward and pretty standard there. And I think we're, I'm just going to try to rush through the other parts, and he, this is all, just so you guys know, the, the, uh, the yellow stuff is more uh, regards to uh, the external stuff, hardware power off, formatting the card. So, you know, if there's something on the card, you can format the card and then it will basically get the card fresh and ready to go. So if you put a card in there, even if it is new, it's always smart to format the card, thus to avoid having your data corrupted when you're recording. Uh, auto rotate. Um, that's off. I usually like to turn that off and usually auto rotate has to do with, you know, like your internal sensors that just like flip the camera around when you're, uh, doing any kind of thing. So let's say you want to film like upside down, but the camera's just like, wait a minute, the internal um, mechanism gravity is telling me that this is the right way. So I'm going to flip it over there as a result. So sometimes you want to have that off because then you could have more of that creative um, Dutch angle that you're looking for. Um, auto power off. That's another good one. I mean, if you want it on, you can have it on. And that's usually what happens if you leave the camera on and you have no idea if you're going to be using it for anything like that. So if you're not touching anything, and if, and if you automatically leave the camera on, you can be like, oh, crap, I left the camera on. I'm wasting the battery. So you can set it to maybe four, four minutes, and then it'll automatically power off if nothing's happening. But sometimes I just like to pr prefer to have it off. Um, yeah. Format, file numbering, continuous, you know. So there's a select folder. See, you have different folders. You can create folders, and it'll help organize within there as well. Um, hmm. I think I'm pretty much wrapping up pretty soon. You know, L LED brightness, you can always uh, turn that down. And it really is based on, you know, the screen here, but since this is an output, you don't really get a, uh, the option of seeing what the LED bright screen is. And, of course, uh, date and time, this seems about right. 28th, yeah, it's the right time. So usually it's always like 1992 for some reason. Um, but that's always fun to have video display. NTSC is American standard. PAL is European standard. Just think, just something to think about as well. Um, feature guide, you can enable it, disable it, whatever you want to do. It's just a nice little guide to kind of guide you through um, your setup and set, set cameras. But of course, there is a uh, manual that we also offer as well here at MCAT. Um, this is the kind of like the brief tech run through of this camera. If you are interested in checking out this camera and learning more about it, um, our offices are open from 11 to 7, Tuesday through Friday, orientation every Wednesday at MCAT. Um, pretty straightforward, a nice little camera. Um, I would say that it would probably be the uh, semi-professional um, step moving forward. If you're interested in going more professional, you got to start uh, forking over a little more dough on your own sake. But these cameras are usually free to check out here at MCAT, and we usually have um, Open hours between 11 and 7, Tuesday through Friday. Uh, we have a, it's, it's it basically you can check out the cameras for free. And we usually have uh, an average of three to four days. Sometimes it's over the weekend, so you might have an additional day or two. But we always ask that you return the cameras promptly in time for our Saturday drop-ins. So that kind of does it for uh, me. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. There's a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Um, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good weekend and have a good homecoming. Mm -hmm.